Human beings look at the stars and wonder. They want to know, what is that? What is that about? How do I fit in? They hear about the moon landing, and they want to know, what was that like? If we're part of the human race, we're part of the race that went to the moon. We're part of the species that looked at the stars and wondered, what the heck are those things? Looking at the sky reminds you that there's more to the universe than what's for lunch. And that's why we study astronomy. To be able to share that with everybody is to feed them something that makes them human. Not only to study it, but also to be reminded that, yeah, we get to take part in this too. There's no part of astronomy that you're denied because you're not smart enough. Anybody can wonder about the stars. Back in the papacy before Francis was Benedict, and one of his lines in a final elocution to the fathers of the general congregation was, go to the frontiers. Well, there isn't much more frontier than 3.7 billion years away. The first uh, official interest of the Church for Astronomy started in 1582 with the reform of the calendar. Then in 1891, Pope Leo XIII wanted to have an observatory to show that the Church is not against science, but uh, the Church promotes good science. They start out by having telescopes on the Tower of the Winds, and then on the walls surrounding the Vatican, as the city lights grow, and as the Italian government gives them back the territory out in Castel Gandolfo. In the 30s, they build new telescopes on the roof of the Papal Palace in Castel Gandolfo, best telescopes of their era in the 1930s. By the 1980s, light pollution makes those telescopes unusable, so we build a new telescope in the dark skies of Arizona. Interesting thing about the Vatican Observatory Foundation, when it got started, the idea was it'll raise money to help the telescope operate. It's done a lot more than that. Pope Leo XIII said, the reason for us having a Vatican observatory is to show the world that the church supports true science. The foundation is an essential way of showing the world because the foundation is where the world and the observatory meet. I think the Jesuit astronomers do an excellent job of bridging the perceived gap between faith and science. I think they see the universe as a sign of God's infinite wisdom and creation, and I think that they, through their work, express that beautifully. More than with words, with our life, uh, we witness that science and faith not only can coexist, but they, they can help each other. It's a very strong basis uh, to, to tie science together with religion. And uh, that's always a great topic because when you talk about that with a potential fundraiser, it takes them out of the realm of just operating a telescope. It, it really ties in the, the association with uh, church and science. The foundation is about 25 years old. It was created with Father Coyne when he was director of the Vatican Observatory. And its mission was basically threefold, to build a telescope, to maintain and repair the telescope, and to engage in educational activities. The fact that we, every year, go to the general public, go to our friends, go to the people who are really strongly interested in what we're doing, ask them for resources, but share with them the results of what those resources have allowed us to do, means that there's a direct connection. These are the people who will tell us what they're interested in. These are the people who will share their dreams with us, and not just us with them. It is this avenue for communicating with the general public that it's unique. I see the reason for my continued support, uh, and I think my wife would agree, is uh, the fact that uh, the people who are involved, the scientists involved, and the associated uh, staff people, uh, it's their dedication. Their dedication and belief in astronomy and the tie-in with religion, uh, which only confirms their belief in their studies. So it's, it's really the people that uh, have created the, uh, the deep desire in, in, in Karen and me to continue on working on the board.
I'm a father Jean-Baptiste Kikwaya Eluo. I'm working in three projects. The first one is NEOS, Near Earth Object. So what I'm doing with NEOS is just observe them using our modern telescope VAT. The second project is Meteos. I worked on very faint Meteos, what we call shooting stars. And the third project is set fireball network. They will have four cameras here around Tucson so that actually we can monitor any fireball getting into the UF atmosphere in the region. It's a huge educational enterprise that we're really beginning to undertake here. All right, gentlemen, are we ready? These are Vatican Observatory astronomers. They will introduce themselves and then introduce you to the project that you'll be working on. So I'm Father Jean-Baptiste Kikwaya. What we'll be observing, we'll be able to see it. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the observations that we can make at a telescope such as the, uh, the Vatican Observatory 1.8 meter here in Arizona. Have either of you guys discovered an asteroid? And if so, what was your favorite part about it? I've actually discovered thousands of asteroids and four comets. <laughs> It was really uh, quite of an honor, you know, for me to be able to just talk to you and kind of get to know what, what the research goes on um, at the VAT. This is one of many science elective courses, so all the students who are taking this course uh, really want to be here. And that makes it so much more fun to teach because these guys are really excited about astronomy. And every day in here, there's, there's a tremendous amount of energy, tremendous amount of enthusiasm. It's an extraordinarily positive environment. And because these kids are so engaged, they really eat this stuff up. You know, when we can put them in contact with astronomers, it just it's so much more effective. I'm really interested in, in working for NASA someday. That's kind of my life ambition. And so for me to get to talk to and actually interact with people that are already at that stage in life, it's, it's, it's quite inspiring for me, I think. so. I really do hope this program expands. Right now, the astronomers are teaching our kids some, some good astronomy. At some point, I hope our students will be able to actually assist them in terms of research, actually use the VAT telescope from home and in some way contributes to the important studies that the Vatican Observatory is doing. Who knows what can happen in the future? I'm a professor of astronomy at Stewart Observatory, and one of the proudest things we have here is the Stewart Observatory Mirror Lab, where we make the mirrors for our own and other people's large telescopes. Roger Angel is the guru who's been doing this for over 30 years, working his way up from one meters to eight and a half meters, the largest mirrors ever made in the world, basically. The Vatican Observatory has a pivotal role in this because Roger Angel worked his way up and learned how to make mirrors, and theirs was one of the first mirrors he made when he really didn't know if this method would succeed, where you put in lumps of borosilicate and heat the oven to 1160 degrees and spin it so it forms a parabolic surface and then cool it. Um, it's very high risk, uh, seat of the pants engineering, and the Vatican Mirror for their telescope was one of the first successful substantial sized mirrors to come out of this. Historically, this is where the casting has been happening for the last 20 years or so. The Vatican Observatory is 1.8 meter, that is to say six foot mirror, was cast in a different location. It was in fact cast in a, a building that doesn't exist anymore on campus, the defunct synagogue. So the saying goes that the Vatican uses a mirror cast by an angel in a synagogue. The first international project that astronomers worldwide decided to invest quite a lot of time and energy into was a photographic map of the sky. That project started around 1890, where 20 observatories around the world, including the Vatican Observatory, divided the sky into zones that were mapped by these observatories. The project lasted until the 1950s. Now, the mirror that's being polished right here is going to be the centerpiece of an instrument which will map the sky twice a week <laughs> with a much larger resolution, much larger precision. Doing science research is expensive. Instruments are expensive, the telescope costs money to maintain, and the Vatican Foundation is essential because there needs to be fundraising going on to enable this kind of unique activity.
The bath was built on its mountain and developed uh, thanks to the support of many friends and benefactors of the Vatican Observatory Foundation. Without their support, it would be very difficult to carry out our research. There are so many ways for people to get involved in the Vatican Observatory Foundation. You don't need to be a scientist or an astrophysicist or even a Jesuit to appreciate the work that they do. And many of the videos are posted online at the Foundation website, which are easy interpretations for lay people of what the Jesuit scientists are doing. The answer is in expanding your mind. Do you want to simply be satisfied living in the world that it is that we know it today? Or do you want to think out of the box? I suspect anybody who's ever studied any science or any engineering has at one time or another wondered if they couldn't be doing astronomy. It's the first science you ever study. It's the easiest science to get into. But, let's face it, there are a couple thousand professional astronomers out of seven billion people in the world. The Vatican Observatory Foundation is a way that astronomy becomes not what they're doing, but what we're doing. It's a direct way that they can share in the fun, the excitement, and the wonder of the discoveries that we're making. They can get a front row seat to the stuff we're doing, they can interact with us, and they can become partners in what is ultimately the most exciting thing the human race is doing right now.